Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, Feliz Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Happy New Year. Sort of. No. In order to celebrate, we're going to get a little culture in us. We need it. Plus, Apple's gone on a med tech hiring spree, a new Google Drive for iPad, and the return of skeuomorphism. All that and the best food you've never made mm. on iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by Prosper.com. Prosper is a peer to peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Amazon gift card when you get a loan. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used Apple or Android device is worth at gazelle.com. I need a new tagline. Uh, that was fun. It was, I it, was thinking of. I like, felt like you were going to go somewhere. iPad today. Here it is. Let's get Do you ready like it? to iPad. We got two iPads, and there's two of us. And that's, that's what. All, that's all you need. It's well, there's Brian, to too. Brian's Brian back there. He probably has an iPad or two back He's there as well. Pushing buttons. Doing stuff. Sarah Lane, Leo Laporte. This is, there he is. He pushed the wrong button again. Hey, Brian. Sitting in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> where this is the show where we show you all it's sorts of cool, weekend. neat, and wonderful things you could do with your iPad delicious. It's true, it's true. And uh, like we do in the beginning of every show, which we have been doing for almost four years now. Almost four years the show has been on the air. It's hard you, you, possible. You, you, you've got that, you got a real sour expression when I said that, like, <laughs> oh, God, four years. I didn't think it'll last four weeks. <laughs> Um, it, ended well, up, it ended up being a show that a lot of people seem to really enjoy. It's one of our most popular so, shows. thank gosh for all of you, because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know what you're doing. That's the problem. Right. You know exactly what you're doing. Right, yes. The idea is to produce something that people want, and then nobody can ever get rid of what me. An, what an awful idea. <laughs> and why would anyone ever want to get rid of you? Exactly. You're, you're I not know. like a cat. What? 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 I just said that to rile, rile you up. You know, my cats are speaking a little Espanol today because... Well, it's Cinco de Mayo. It's Cinco de Mayo. You might be watching the show after the 5th of May, so it will not be Cinco de Mayo any longer. But as we record the show at noon-ish, actually more like 1 p.m. <laughs> Pacific time this Monday, it is Cinco de Mayo. And... I have to say, Leo, that I, I loosely understand that Cinco de Mayo has to do with, you know, the uh, Mexican independence and exactly. cultural... Uh, it's the day they wiped out Davy Crockett and everybody inside the Alamo. And now no, we all not. celebrate it. It's a, a Mexican independence day. Yeah. And uh, it's a one... <laughs> See? <laughs> Felines nationwide are festive... What is, All I'm is saying it, is, those of you who listen on audio, I, I can't saw. decide whether you have an advantage right now or a disadvantage. There is a cat in a poncho. Cat in a poncho with a sombrero. That's right, and he looks like Wilfred Brimley. <laughs> So Which that's many really cats all you need do. To know. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing with cats yeah. and Wilfred Brimley. If you know who that is, a Today, whale commercial. To celebrate Cinco de Mayo. At first, when you said that, I thought, oh, great, we're going to do tequila recipes. But no, we decided not to do that. Although I see you are having a lovely Dosecchi spear. <laughs> not right. I'm having a sparkling seltzer water. Why even bother? I Why like, even bother having I that in a can? I like fizz. Okay. I like I the guess. fizz. Right. It's water, but more fun. <laughs> Okay. It's water plus. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, hey, if we say Cinco de Mayo, how do we loosely uh, now base I'm some told what? it is not Mexican Independence Day. That's in September. It is celebrating the victory by the Mexican army over France. That's sort of in an independence. 1862. They, they, they kept themselves from being enslaved by the French. I don't think the French were there to enslave them. <laughs> Maybe they wanted to sell them some wine or something. I don't <laughs> and they were like, get out of here. You don't think of the French as, as people would like come to a country and say, okay, this is it. It's ours now. It's more like, Ooh, perhaps you would like a little uh, vino. Would you like a colony? <laughs> now, 
We're going to do language. <laughs> so, you know, language and culture. And culture. Yeah. It's sort of, it's like, how do you base a, a theme, which we usually do off the top of the show, around Cinco de Mayo? And I thought, well, it's a little, you know, I don't know. But I love Mexican culture. not that many culture. Cinco de... Well, p please show us some Mexican culture apps. I love I, would it. I just didn't want it to be so specific that we didn't have enough to talk about. What, I don't happen to have any Mexican culture apps there, right to hand. That's what I uh, was <laughs> afraid of. <laughs> But I do love Mexican culture. We, it's one of my favorite. If you're in California, yeah, it's a very natural to go to Mexico for vacation, uh, to spend time there. And, of course, uh, California has a lot of Hispanic uh, residents, uh, most from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so we feel a natural affinity uh, to Mexico. I Absolutely. Think. Even the name California oh, yeah. is Spanish uh, in origin. So um, I, I, my daughter just got back from two months in uh, uh, Juan, Juanajuato. Where's that? Guanajuato. Guanajuato. It's uh, near San Miguel de Allende. That's all I know. Okay. Which Sounds is another good. place I don't know where it is. Sounds but... great. <laughs> I love Mexico. I do too. Do you like going there? I you love know, it. You know, I haven't been to Mexico in a few years. The last time I went was, gosh, I mean, almost 10 years ago Well, now. it's time to but, go. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, well, there are some really lovely places in Mexico. I don't want to just blanket statement and say it's great. Oaxaca. But, I love the state of Oaxaca. We used to go to Puerto Escondido. There's a beautiful place you can go. The surf is... Sayulita's Beach has a lush surf that anybody could surf on. You'd be up on a board in a moment. Yeah. And the best thing is you can sit on the beach. They'll bring you margaritas and ceviche and you never have to get up. Fish tacos, you never have to get up. That's all I really want. That's what I want. That's all That's I, a perfect vacation. Let's be honest. Fish tacos and a little uh, tequila-based drink... I'm not going to complain if I can just have that at all times. Yeah. Pizza would be nice, though. That's they a whole other culture. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I thought that we would start with an app that we may have discussed on this show. I don't think it was ever anybody's app cap, and that's Khan Academy. Khan Academy is an interesting... Hey, why'd you just... They have an app? They do. And it seems to be crashing. Let's see. What's going on with you, Con? <laughs> gonna, Let me open it again. This is going to be a great show, folks. <laughs> I was just playing with it this morning. So it's. Uh, I think it's just... Yeah. Maybe you have to reboot your machine or no, something. No, I just had to, um, I had to reboot the app. What's nice about Con Academy is this is an app that is designed to help you learn a bunch of stuff. And a lot of this is, you know, we're talking about history and culture. That would be kind of in the humanities section. But there's math and science and economics and 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 all sorts of kind of like how to, it's, 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 it's you could think of it as kind of learning on your own time, uh, at your own speed, uh, watching a variety of uh, videos that have been put together. Many of them have um, have the subtitles, sort of like closed captioning, so you can jump around. Not mm -hmm. all of them, though. But I went into the humanities section, and I thought, hey, history, art history, American civics, cool. Let's go into the history section. And then, you know, again, this is not Mexican history specifically, but this is just kind of like, what about crash course world history? Okay, that's kind of interesting. And then I go and say, when people do great and really terrible things, oh, like the Renaissance, Renaissance was the thing. So then you're, I've kind of drilled down, and now I can watch a variety of videos, like the Seven Years' War. How much do you know about that? How long did it last? Yeah. And other questions. I can see now that this is about a, you know, not quite 12 minute video. And they've got. Wow. Yeah, they've That's got, cool. They've gotten a little dressier. Salmon's got a little fancier. We're going to talk about war. Ah, explosions everywhere. So traditionally, historians are pretty keen on war. So now, this is aimed at a high school level. Yes. Um, and it could be a supplement to your high school. But I think to exactly. for anybody. Uh, high school or not, this is a great way to learn. And it, the history stuff seems to be more new. I mean, it used to was originally mostly math and sciences. Exactly. And I love it that they've expanded to this. I do too. And yeah, I mean, you, you, this is, you know, some of this is sort of designed to be like fun learning. Nothing wrong with that. But honestly, there's a lot about Our kids history. Are having too much fun. Exactly. Learning. Right. Yeah. Just bring it down a notch, Khan Academy. You know, when I was in high school at that level, history was like the thing I hated most in life. I just wasn't interested in history until I was a little too old to be
be like yes. learning it. You know, now I wish I would have majored in history. So this isn't Salman, of course. This is one of their other teachers. It's uh, John, it says. I don't know if John is, but uh, they have other teachers too, and this is great. Yeah, exactly. The bandwidth just got a little bit strange. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you've got um, Atlantic slave trade, Colombian exchange, the Renaissance, Spanish Empire. You All know, topics that people need to learn. Yeah, and now so sometimes there are subtitles, sometimes there aren't. I, you know, now these are produced really by Crash Course. That's interesting. So he's done a relationship with Crash Course to mm -hmm. put videos on his con, but it's still free, right? Yeah, it's completely I free. Love that. Uh, there, you know, it's it's. There are certain uh, videos that are available offline. You can download the videos and 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 watch them later. Um, you've got you know some management options, but in general, this is just kind of a fun. Um, uh, a, a crash course in a variety of historical topics that you Love know that. some of the stuff I know a lot about, but most of it I didn't. You know I, I I know what the Silk Road was, but I could learn a little bit more about ancient trade. I think that sounds delightful. So anyway, this is just a nice app to have. There, there he is John again. Green. He's kind of kind of does his thing. He's, He's one of the Vlog the Brothers. Oh, the Vlog Brothers. Oh yeah. I don't actually know them. Me neither. Uh, Alexander the Great, Chinese history, Confucius, and so on and so on. So that's Khan Academy, and again, it's free. Um, the app is designed very nicely, and yeah, if you're if you're interested at all, and you know, you can airplay the stuff uh, to your Apple TV, um, you know, or 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 go full screen uh, with the video. But if you're interested or know anybody uh, that's in your family or friend, niece or nephew, that type of a thing that uh, could benefit from. Um, from history, this is a nice place to go. And like Leo mentioned, um, Khan Academy is very focused on a variety of um, math and science courses as well. In fact, the history stuff is not quite as robust, but it is in there, so it's good, it's good to have. <clears throat> Eighth grade math. What did we do back then? Geometry? <laughs> Sounds good. Pythagorean so, theorem, I love that one. I think a great thing to do for Cinco de Mayo would be to learn Spanish. We, uh, see. See. <laughs> we. See. Yeah. Okay, that's the first thing. You've already learned your first word. Yes. Not we, but see. Now, I learned Spanish from reading uh, Playboy Mexico, and I'm not going to recommend that because okay. I... <laughs> well, okay. it is inspirational, and it is available on, uh, on any of the iPad. There's another thing, and we've talked about this before, and I really love it, called Duolingo, which is a free way to learn languages. As you can see, I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> the basics. My my Spanish hasn't progressed too much since the last time we talked about Duolingo. But I just feel like this is such an easy way to learn. It is free. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way they support themselves is kind of interesting because as you progress, eventually you'll start doing little bits of translation and they actually crowdsource translations to charge people for crowdsourced translations. So by using the app, by learning Spanish or French or one of the other languages on Duolingo, you're actually supporting Duolingo. Isn't that cool? Select the apple. Well, that's easy enough. It's la... La manzana. Manzana. I'm right, all right? Now, you notice I heard how to say la manzana. Una mujer come una manzana. Now, we've learned some of these words before. So, a woman eats, uh, eats an, apple. an apple. So, they, they make this pretty easy. You see these, like the refrigerator magnet words at the bottom. A woman, and then I'm going to pick the words, eats an, and by the way, notice a uh, and an are very important. Those are the indefinite articles. We're learning that too, and as well as some nouns. Let's see if I got that right. Oh, yes, absolutely correct. Also, I note that these are, they have masculine and feminine nouns, unlike English. So, una mujer, una manzana. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. I'm learning a little. Usted come. Usted, the formal you, you used only eat. with strangers. For example, you are a boy. Usted, usted es una niña. Como está usted? Yeah, okay, I got it. So, usted coma, come, right? Come. You, formal, eat. Oops, I got it wrong. Let's not do drink. Let's let's do eat. Should I get one wrong just so you could see? Yeah. Because they kind of send you a slight they, electric shock. They say Oh, oh now watch this. Yeah, now you can now, use a Now, because it's got a microphone. La mujer come una manzana. Okay. La mujer come una manzana. And I got it right. Nice. Usted es un hombre. Oh, boy. Now, we're going to type this in English. See, so you're getting reading, you're getting writing, you're getting vocabulary, you're getting grammar in a very painless way. Now, obviously, uh, the, <laughs> this is the same lesson. <laughs> Usted es un hombre. You are a man. I haven't progressed very far, but you can, in fact, progress 
quite quickly through this and get... Ella es una niña. Uh oh Ella es una niña. Ella is she is, and it's una, so that's a, a girl. Is that right? Yes. Anyway, I love this. Duolingo free... This is a wonderful way to learn. You know, it's it's funny that you mentioned Duolingo because we, we hadn't talked about it before the show, but I use Duolingo as well for my French. Spanish I took in school, so you I see? feel like a lot of that stuff, I'm, actually, it's kind of, it's just already You know it, it's brain. in your head, yeah. Yeah, but for French. How uh, far have you gotten? Let's see you, uh, let's see, you I have mean, your French lessons there? Yeah, I'm still on basics, but yeah. you know, select the man. L'homme. Uh, continue, yeah. select the apple. Oh, the you got pom. an apple too. It, but see, not a manzana, it's a palm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Je suis, I am rich. Jesus is, what that says. is rich. Oh, I am rich. Je suis rich. Rich. I am rich. If only that were true. They give you nice little encouraging sentences to translate. Yeah. I got an apple, you got rich. The woman is rich. Uh, yeah, so it, it, again, I, I agree with you. I think that um, what it will do is, uh, period. Um, it, it, it'll kind of keep circling around uh, every part of a sentence. You really do learn, I think. Yeah, because you're, it's good, it's it'll, it'll say, hey, how do you say this in French? Okay, let's do a couple other things. Hey, how do you say that same word, but we're going to present it in French, and now you say it in English. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of beating it over your head a little bit, but with languages, you sort of need that to the point where you stop thinking about it. Right. And I think that Duolingo does this really well. It's um, nice, too, on an iPad or an iPhone because you can do a little bit every whenever you've got a moment. Right. The same way you'd do Flappy Bird. In fact, if you did this instead of Flappy Bird, as long as you did Flappy Bird, you'd be speaking Spanish in like a month or French or both. Does anyone play Flappy Bird anymore? Uh, I don't know. Whatever happened to that guy? What was his name? Uh, Dong Nguyen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. You've Thank got you. a hell of a memory. Well. Uh, yeah. That'll be a trivia question in about five years. The creator of Flappy yeah, who Bird? Yeah, created Flappy Bird. Yeah. Dong you know what? It'll, it'll be a Jeopardy question. Exactly. What? This, in in 2014, this man create... in twenty four thousand dollars a day in, in, while living in his mother's basement. You're right, you're right. In 2014, <laughs> a, Vietnamese, a Vietnamese man named Dong Nguyen made this highly addictive iPhone game. And what is Flappy Bird, Alex? Correct. Right, <laughs> he says. Right. Right. Good. I'll you know, take Alex Flappy Trebek, Birds for 400. Alex Trebek has the best job. It's a pretty easy job. Well, he just pretends like he knows all the answers. Right. You I've know actually... that Alex doesn't do anything. <laughs> he doesn't have to write them. He just pretends you see how hard like that he, was. Like, he just pretends like well, everyone at Jeopardy knows the answer. So he if has you're that, on the show. That attitude comes across very well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. You, everybody, As everybody knows, it was Monet. Yeah. And how much did you bet? Ooh. Oh. You dropped down to zero. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes. You can't go into Final Jeopardy in the in the red, you know. Usted they don't let you play. Es un hombre. Or they didn't used to anyway. I am es not. Niño. I am not a boy. Es, él es <laughs> un niño, un niño. <laughs> él es un niño. Y he, sh anyway, there you go. It w I wish language had been this easy uh, to learn when I was a boy. It's fun too because there, uh, there's, there's audio. It even lets you. I like that you practice. can record. Yeah. yeah, I like that you can record it. It's very cool. And they do. Uh, they seem to check whether you pronounced it well or not. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so that's that's uh, Duolingo. Uh, it's a great app. We have free, talked free, about free. it. Yeah, it's completely from free. From Carnegie Mellon. And it does. Um, is it from Carnegie Mellon? That's yeah, because we have something else from Carnegie Mellon later on the show. We do. How exciting is that? I know. Yeah. Um, with Duolingo, let's go ahead and quit. Um, I just want to make sure we mention of the courses. It's not every language, but you've got Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese. Um, looks like some other... I think Chinese. it's, it's a hand, yeah, well, really, uh, that's new. I didn't know yeah, that Chinese. I should yeah. practice. It'd be good I could practice my Chinese. Yeah. For Cinco de Mayo. Well, that just went into English. Oh, I see. It's, it's English lessons if Chinese is your first language. So yeah, you've got, you've got some options. Uh, they are adding courses all the time. Portuguese, I know, wasn't part of the, um, 
uh, the the launch set of, of languages, but it's good. You know what else is great? What else is great? This isn't necessarily, well, I guess you could kind of think of it as teaching you a little bit. It's not necessarily a way to learn a new language, but Google Translate is the best app. It's all you really need. It's, I mean, it's, I've got a friend who's uh, in Israel right now, and so I thought it would be funny to, like, text him in Hebrew. And the thing is, is that I don't, speak Hebrew. I certainly don't write Hebrew, right. but it's easy enough to be like, okay, so if I'm going to start in English and then I want to go ahead and translate to Hebrew, I'm just choosing my language here. So it's English to Hebrew. You've got a nice handy dandy little uh, flippy flip. If I wanted to go easily from <laughs> Hebrew to English. That's what's called a flippy flip? That's exactly what it is. You tap right, the flippy flip and then I've you've got your options. So if I say something like, hey buddy, How's the motherland? Now, it doesn't do a perfect job. No, but like... Uh, but it's, it's usually good enough for a native to understand where you're going with there it. There you go. And then you can, you, can, uh, you can... Actually, you know what? They don't let you uh, listen in Hebrew for whatever reason. Some of the languages They'll you can... They'll speak it to you. Yeah. It's and that's a, handy because then you can hold it up to them and they can laugh at you. Right, and they can say, machine talking. we understand what you meant. <laughs> that's not really what you would say oh, here. Oh, you crazy, here, wacky American. Here in Tel Aviv. Here but anyway, you are with so your... then I just do this. I can go ahead and say, um, that's yes, you'd want translation hold, copied. Hold, hold uh, and, and show them. Well, sure. Because I don't know if you knew how to read that. If you don't speak Hebrew, you'd probably be hard but, to read But all that. I'm doing is texting it to him. Ah, okay. So then he's like, he thinks that I'm like super smart. He's like, look at her writing Hebrew. But I didn't actually learn anything. I was just able to translate quickly and easily. Now, what's cool about Google Translate um, is not only is it, I mean, this is a nice um, universal app. It's an iPhone and an iPad app, but it works perfectly well. It's a native iPad. But you can also write. Now, I'm not going to even attempt to write Hebrew. But if I were to say, oh, I, like handwrite, like with your finger. Yeah. Oh, that is that's new. That's kind of neat. That saves you a little entry time, data entry time. See, hi, how are you? It 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 understood that that's what I wrote. Now, of course, it's adding it onto. I'm not. You actually can also send speak it out loud if you want. It has a microphone. That so too. You could say, yeah. Hey, mofo, what's the happening? Hey, mofo, how's Israel, <laughs> dude? <laughs> oh. Hey, Mofo House. It got, it got Mofo, <laughs> but not How is Israel. I don't, that's confusing to me. I well, I think I was being slangy, and so slangy. I, I uh, confused Google Translate. But anyway, I think that this is just it, w one of the best little, you know, it's, it's, it's as simple as, as anything can be, but Google Translate is like the translator I that, I, that I always go yeah. to um, for variety of things. And like I said, You've got a lot of whoops. You got a lot of languages here that you can choose from. A lot, like so many. I mean, when's the last time you wanted to uh, translate anything into Tamil? Well, it's never happened, but uh, eventually, I think that that'd be pretty fun. And look how pretty that is. It's a beautiful language, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know how much use that's going to be, but. Well, next time I'm in, I'm in Sri Lanka. There I wanna, you go. I want to be able to make some friends and try my best yes indeed so there you go when what do you do do you celebrate will you celebrate later in the day the fabulous cinco de mayo will you celebrate that no i feel like cinco de mayo is a lot like st patrick's, patrick's day. day it's amateur day <laughs> for people who really don't <laughs> care about mexican independence at all i didn't even know that it was the French thing in 1862. I had no. See, that's what you know. I said at the beginning of the show. It's like I have a very loose understanding that it's Mexican. It's a it's a source of Mexican pride. That's fine. But I didn't really know. I should probably just read the Wikipedia entry and then I would know. Uh, did you know? Actually, this is a true story, and it's been going on for a while. At least in the U.S. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. Yeah. There's a lime shortage. And it is, um, it's supposedly kind of a problem, especially on a day like today where everybody's going to be drinking margaritas. Lots of lime juice going to be used There's a gallons. lime shortage, and they're freaking out about the Coronas. You know, you're not going to get a twist of lime in there. You know, at my favorite um, Vietnamese noodle soup house, you get the pho and the, you get the lime and the bean it, curd. Is it uh, pronounced sprouts. pho or? It's pho. 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 But I just say pho. You can't say pho. It's hard to Nobody say pho. Nobody will know what you're talking it about. It also sounds a little pretentious. Yeah. Like well, I'm you know, like. You know why I said that? Because you know? Henry's pho. teacher, Henry was telling me in Colorado, I, he said, I said, oh, there's a pho shop. He said, well, dad, it's pronounced pho. And I said, well, <laughs> how did you know that? 
He said, my professor, I, I was doing a, a oral interpretation or something, and I used the word faux, and the professor said, oh, well, you know, it's faux. And I said, that's just a pretentious person. Well. Don't listen to him. Pronounce it any way you want. I mean, it's, you know, it's... It's pho. It is pho, but whatever. I Sp still, spelled P-H-O. It's just, yeah. It's, you know, it's... I feel like if I was, uh, if I just sat here and said pho, then I would like laugh at myself right. a little bit. But and, anyway, and no one would know what you were talking about. They've been giving me lemons, there. and I've said to them a couple times. Oh no, you can't have lemons in your pho. Can I please have a lime? Two totally different tastes, and they go mm, too expensive. What? Yeah, the limes are too expensive. Really? Well, for this little s shop, so which I, they're they're not going big uh, on anything. I will be celebrating tonight. What are you gonna do? We're gonna go down the street to uh, Mi Pueblo, which is not my house, but in fact a restaurant. It's named delicious, actually. Mi Pueblo, and we're gonna have, and of course on Cinco de Mayo they have a mariachi band. To me, Cinco de Mayo is much more about the music of Mexico uh, than it is about the drinking of Mexico, because you couldn't drink Mexico because it's a country. Right. You could drink your way through it. <laughs> So, I'm, unfortunately, this, this app that I'm trying to show you... Right. Are, is, are you stalling? It's stalled, and I really want to show you. It's called Mariachi Hero. Oh. And it, it, you've heard of Guitar Hero? Yes. Really? Mariachi Hero. Same idea? Same idea. It's really fun. Mariachi band usually has one bass guitar, one regular guitar, and a couple of trumpets, right? And yeah. uh, you get to be the trumpeter. Here we go. Finally, in Mariachi... Mariachi Hero. Oh, it's sideways. Okay. Oh, now it's. <laughs> let's get this. Let's get this right side around. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Cinco de Mayo. You know, I like De Colores, Guadalajara. But these aren't okay. So this is like. Okay, okay, you want to play? Kind of. You ready to play? I think so. You feel up to it? Sure. Okay, we'll do a quick play. We won't do the story. There's multiplayer and all of that. La Bikina. Ah, let's do it easy, yes? See. Si. And what would you like to play? You can choose... Delirio! Delirio! We'll do easy delirio. Get ready. Okay. I think this is actually kind of fun. This is weird. It's, I don't like the skin there, but okay, ready? Okay, ready? What? Did okay, you, ready? Did, was you just okay. hit the head with a dart? Oh, it's like Guitar Hero for Mariachi. It's free. What do you want? Get ready. I'm not sure what I want. Ah, uh, Viva Zapata. I, maybe I made it too easy. I'll say. <laughs> you just sit there. <laughs> I'm going to get to play any minute now. <laughs> okay. This okay, is maybe, clearly the easiest Maybe you don't want to do easy, okay? There it is. I think this says Cinco de Mayo like nothing else. Gosh, you know, now I feel like I want to go to... Have a tequila margarita? Or to Allegri tonight. Yeah, with a little bit of uh, lime. Yeah, but they're not going to have any limes. So I'm There's changing, a lime yeah. shortage. That's what I heard on I Had Today. Right. <laughs> All right, you wanted a sink on a bio app? I think it's great, Leo. Mariachi hero. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about their faces. It's they all, all look a little tired. The graphics are not great. The graphics are not a strong suit. But I just think it's kind of intriguing. All right, let's try hard. You okay. Say. Yeah. This let's is do Mariachi's it. fifth stage. Okay. 2000 to the present. Get ready now. This is a big band. We're going to play the trumpet first here. Okay, you ready? Okay, get your, get your fingers ready. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy, oh, oh golly, this Whoa, is hard. That's right. Oh. I don't really understand how you are. <laughs> Trumpet solo! How, how, how do you. How is what you're doing affecting the song in it any is, way? But not, but as with Guitar Hero, unless you know what you're doing. It's not really good, but I am making the cat dance, and that's all that matters. Ladies and gentlemen, Enough of that. That's Guitar 
Mariachi. I'm sorry, Mariachi. Hero. J G I R O. Right. Hero. 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 <laughs> like. Who would have thought? Because see, the G is pronounced like an H yeah. in the. It's pronounced hero. Spelled Chardé. Language. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Mariachi Hero. I'm saying that like Japanese. I don't know. I'm getting very confused. We now. have a Chinese, a Japanese restaurant in town called Heroes. Oh, like I don't think H-I-R-O. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they'll have a mariachi band tonight, though. Well, you know what? They're really missing out on some really I fun, I love uh, it. Uh, festive. They could make um, spicy rolls that are. I'm sure Andy will. Well, get Andy. Andy, you I know, know you're Andy. watching. Why don't you take advantage of this? <laughs> Andy's our favorite sushi chef. Of this holiday. Hey, so uh, for the links to the apps that we mentioned, Mariachi music apps, Google Translate, Duolingo, even Khan Academy, you can always go to twit.tv slash IPT. That's where not only our show notes are and, and links to all the apps that we talk about on every show, but, um, but the show archives in general. Everything that we ever do is here. It is too bad they don't have Vuvuzela hero. Because I think I could, I could really romp. I think you, yeah, that. you would, you would show them, you'd show them all. Vuvuzela, yeah. Let's play a little, little music while we're, uh, while we're, while we're. I don't actually remember the what the Vuvuzela here. sounds like. Okay, yeah, let's, let's do an ad to music. Yeah. Okay. It's a little. This is a Ranchera music app. Okay. It has all the Ranchera radio stations, uh, all over uh, Mexico. I don't know, Cantina y Despejo. Tropical songs. Let's play a little bit of those while I tell everybody about music. There we go. Prosper, Prospero, the calm. <laughs> Prosper. Prosper.com actually is a brilliant idea. It's a peer to peer lending marketplace. This is Silicon Valley's answers to big banks and bad loans with, with Prosper. Okay, we can stop with our ranchera. That's a little over dramatic. With That's a little much. <laughs> with the prosper, how what would you do if you knew you'd get seventy in seventy two hours? You'd get thirty five thousand dollars in cash to cover your needs to pay off those high interest rate credit cards to start a business, maybe do a home improvement project. Prosper makes it easy. Just visit the Prosper website, fill in a few basic details, and you'll get a uh, you'll get a, a, a online rate almost instantly, and it will not affect your credit score. And I do like that. Well, yeah, because I'm always worried about, yeah, you need, uh, about that stuff. You need not you, worry. You, know, you always hear that your credit score goes down every time you check. No, well, I can tell you won't hear. Okay, oh, good. that's good. Would you like to pay? Would you like to pay off those high rate? You should pay off those high rate credit cards. So here's the deal: low fixed rates. These are unsecured personal loans, so you don't have to have any collateral. It's a multi year terms are available. Um, I just, I you know, we could we could buy a new brick house studio. Just update the brick house. Maybe. Maybe we could, I don't know, get you some new microphones and lights and things. I don't know. There's so many things we could do with this. You know, I'm actually going to use Prosper uh, because Good. I've got um, a credit card that I've, you know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm having a hard rates. time look at the getting, interest rates. getting down to a reasonable yeah. level because they're like 20%. The interest alone each month yeah. is, you know, I'm almost. You're not paying off the principal. Well, not fast enough. Go to Prosper. There are more than 2 million people now, lenders and borrowers alike at Prosper.com, and they have now funded, they crossed the magic threshold, one bit more than $1 billion in loans. Pro this is really a, a, a revolution in the way loans work. No outrageous fees, no rising interest rates, and no, you don't have to put on a neck necktie and go in a bank and beg them. Just visit Prosper.com slash twit and get your rate. For a limited time, Prosper's offering Twit viewers a $50 Amazon gift card when you get a loan. So visit prosper.com slash twit. That's a special site just for our viewers. And get up to $35,000 in just three days, plus that Amazon gift card. Prosper's not affiliated with Amazon. For gift card details, visit prosper.com slash twit. And we thank them for their support of IPT. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I mean, just chips and salsa, everybody. I love everybody. this kind of music. A little chips and salsa. This is not mariachi. This is ranchero, which is another kind. I don't really know the difference. I know that there are different. <laughs> are you going to have a burrito? I'm going to have a burrito. That's a cat in a sweater. And that is what they call a burrito. See, you audio listeners.
We you're love missing you. the Paritos. We love you, but like, there's no way to describe the Pareto. You must see it. <laughs> you must lay le, 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 con los I thought you studied ojos. this. I'm, I'm only on the, on the beginning. I don't know those words. No, ve, ve, ver, to see. To see, to believe is creer, ver. Veni, vidi, vici. I came, le, I saw, I eh. conquered. Yes. Is that what that is? Yeah. Cool. Hey, so you know, Google Docs has, has come to the iPad, and you might be saying, what? Wait a minute, I was just Google loading Docs Google is, Drive. Is Google that the Docs same? Google Docs is already on the iPad. Yeah. Well, no, but, but, but Google Drive is. But Google Docs and Google Sheets, which is the documents and then the spreadsheets, oh. specifically that a lot of people use Google Drive for, are now their own standalone it's a apps. Different, if it's a different download. Exactly. It's oh. its own standalone app because Google Drive can also be backups for for a variety of other uh, uh, you know images and it's storage as much as it is. Docs. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm looking at this is you know I've got a, I've got a few different Gmail accounts, but this is um, that looks just like Google Drive. Yeah, but this is Docs specifically. Got just it. Docs. Just Docs. Just Docs. Just so, you know, docs. I've got a lot of, you know, scripts in here. We've got some you know, sponsor stuff. This is all kind of Twit-based because um, this is the the um, the account that I'm looking through. But I can see, you know, here are my docs. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm signed in with my Gmail account. I can change those. I can go to Google Drive. I can um, manage documents that are on this specific device. Do I can you look recommend at stuff downloading this? Is this worth if I already because I already have Drive? Well, here's the here's the reason I think it's it it can be worth it is if you say yeah I've got Google Drive because I like to use Google Docs. Right. Well, then you might just want the Google Docs app. It right. just It just makes it that much less confusing because maybe you're like I never ever ever use spreadsheets or. I don't really ever use Google Docs because I've got, let's say, Word, Microsoft Office for iPad, which is now something that's available. But I do like spreadsheets, and that's where Google Sheets come in, which are, where are you? I have to feel, I feel like this is an Here. unnecessary program. Like, Why? I have all this functionality with Drive, right? Yeah. There's, it's just, it's everything Drive is in less. Well, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's I feel like this is just Google saying, we just want more real estate. We'd like another icon on your iPad. Because I don't know how it's different. I don't. Well, Google Drive is a little, I'm going to go to Google more. Drive right now. Thanks yeah. for using Google Drive. Yes, I agree. Blah, blah, blah. That's so fine. this is another thing I had a, oh, okay. Well, I thought it, I had to re-log into my Google Drive because of this update. Well, you're insane. See, the thing with Google Drive. <laughs> Thank you. Is, is is uh it, it just, looks exactly the same yeah well but drive is again a lot of other stuff right and if i'm just looking through uh, uh docs or 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 spreadsheets it's just that much more specific and maybe you're right maybe it is google just saying we're going to give people that many more um uh, opportunities to use google products but i don't have a problem with that it's fine with me yeah no i guess so yeah it's good to know about i just i just not sure there's no additional functionality then, really. Now, Web3699 says it's getting bad reviews in the App Store. I haven't looked at those That's bad reviews. That's just people like me going, well, yeah. what's the point? I've, I've spent a little time in both apps, and there's the apps are perfectly fine. It's just this, I, I, I wonder if you there's just even wonder. much different code in there. If it's just like, okay, yeah. we're going to take off this, and we're going to slap a label on here and we're going to make another icon and now you have well, two. Well, this is certainly a tough crowd. I thought that you would say, hey, how No, 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 because cool. I, I use Drive. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So here's something Dreamscapes is telling me in the chat room. They've taken editing out of Drive. So if you want to edit, you have to use Docs. Oh. Well, that's interesting. But that's also so an why, artificial... That's very artificial. So Drive is... Now what? Just like a read-only type of a situation? Yeah, that's just they just made that up, so you'd have to download Docs. But it's free, so it's not oh, like know, anything just... bad is happening to you. Sometimes you don't want to understand what Google's doing. You just go with it. <laughs> I just don't like it when companies <laughs> do something that is just for no reason to benefit you, but just because they want to do it. It doesn't. It, it's like, well, what's what's in it for me? Kids? Well, I think they're sectioning out their products. Google uh. Docs and Google Sheets are two different products, even though Maybe a lot time, of us have always thought of this as all one big Google right. Drive thing. Maybe in time, the difference will become clear. You're but, right. But for now, if you want to edit, you can no longer do that in Drive. They've taken that out, and you have to get Docs. Uh, yeah, it makes, it makes it that much less of a reason for me to use the Google Drive right. app, which is actually a pretty nice app. Uh, but but again, that's it's kind of a 
it's an everything type of a uh, repository. Speaking of Office for iPad, Office for iPad now officially includes printing. If you have an Air print uh, printer, <laughs> right? You <laughs> that's compatible. It'll that's print. A, that's that's a thing. As I Microsoft became... pointed out, they said, "Hey, look, the iPad didn't print for a long time either." Don't expect us to print right out of the box, but now they did. Well, a month or two later, they could print, so that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's a, I think that, that came out, I think, on um, May 1st. It was last week yeah, at some point, so it's yeah. it, nothing, nothing too exciting, but it is official. Um, also, we mentioned uh, at the top of the show that Apple was on a medical tech hiring spree of sorts. This is actually a story um, that uh, Reuters published this morning um, that, uh, you know, it, it really starts to seem like... This has to do with uh, the, the the still mythical iWatch plan and the fact that we've got a, um, a health book app that is upcoming, supposedly going to be part of iOS 8, which we might hear more about at WWDC. And, and um, yeah, they're, they're, the, the company is hiring a variety of people who are in the medical tech field. Just, it feels like they've been hiring for years. I'm just waiting for them to release something. Yeah, no kidding. Like, uh, what are they going to release? Also, it hasn't Apple, I think I, I think it was um, a statistic like they've acquired 24 companies in the last 18 months. Yeah, like crazy. And it's like, it's, it, this is obviously going somewhere. I, and I really hope it's like a cool new wearable. But then we hear rumors that, you know, you're, we're not going to see a new wearable necessarily. Um, certainly not. It's not going to be uh, shown off on stage on June 2nd, I believe, is when WWDC kicks off. Um, it runs through the week. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is exactly what we talked about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I know that this We're is... We're waiting. Yeah. This is a show about iPads, but... Well, a watch would and, probably tie to an iPad. Yeah. It would tie to iOS, one would think. Yeah. So this could be something that's like a really cool companion piece. I'm excited about that. I want I, my iPad to be that much more interesting. I wouldn't rush to judgment on this. That Remember that we, we also think that iOS 8 is going to have this health book, like right. the Passbook, and we'll keep track of all this health stuff. So the, these medical people may not be for a watch. They may be just to support a health book. It may be that Apple, yes, is pushing into medical, but the way health book works is you can have other devices, a variety of them, including blood pressure cuffs and all sorts of stuff, that would then tie into health book. At least that's what we think. That's also not out yet. That'll be out with iOS 8. It's just, it's such an interesting, I, I think it's very smart if Apple can do this and, and clearly they, they want people to work for the company that, that have a lot of experience in this arena, but to get really deep into the medical field, it's just so, it's just sort of strange. I wouldn't right. have, I wouldn't, you know, two years ago, nobody thought that that's what was happening, but this whole wearable, um, track your fitness, figure out more about your health has gotten so big, all these companies are trying to figure it out, Apple included. We got an Ask Leo question from Ben in Omaha, Nebraska. Hello, Ben. Who says, I was wondering if you could answer this for me. How come if I'm watching a podcast like iPad Today or The Tech Guy, for example, if I start watching first on my iPad and then switch to the iPhone, it's a few minutes behind. Shouldn't you be able to carry on from the last time you stopped? Am I missing something? Well, I think it really depends on what you're using to watch these podcasts. He's saying he's watching live? He's, or he's watching it. He's watching the podcast, and he's. And I'm, saying, I'm amazed it even picks up anywhere close to where you picked up. If it's on a different device, how would it even know? Well, maybe this is the Apple you, podcast. App? If you, I, I, I don't know. He doesn't say. If it was the official podcast app, it shouldn't be a few minutes behind. It should, it should be, be exactly. It should be synced because you're using your iCloud account. I don't understand why what you're getting at all. <laughs> I don't. It should either be right where it is or not at all. It should start at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Um, depending on if it's if it syncs. Like I mean, if you're using something like Downcast. Uh, so some apps do sync. Yeah. But uh, they should sync exactly. I'm not sure why there'd be a difference. Unless yeah, I don't know. Ben. Uh, you know, he didn't say what app he's using, did he? He didn't. That's. It must be it must be some, something of that that app. Ben, is doing. are you out there? Ben writes in a lot, so maybe he's in the chat room. Maybe ben, he, what's the story, Ben? What's the story, Omaha man? Yeah. If you're now, if you're watching live, that's that is different, and that because we have four or five streams. You have UStream, Justin TV, Bit Gravity, FlowSoft. Those are the four providers that give us streaming video, and you can watch any of those four. Uh, they're all at a different part in the show. I bet you that's what's happening. He's talking about watching live, not downloads. Because uh, they all encode... Yeah, see? They're, now, so there's a little difference in time in encoding. That's bit gravity. Uh, and then if you... you Actually, you're watching Ustream. Click bit gravity. Just see where they are. 
So we're watching the live stream. Oh, you can't do it. You probably have to do it from live.twit.tv. Oh, this is all. It's a mess now. It's going to be more inception. That it's got weird. Go video of the video, watching the video. There's a loopy loop. While it watches the video. Looped and loopy loop. But that's because each of them, what happens is we send them all at the same time where we are, but each of them then transcodes the content yeah. in different ways. Uh, some of them, who's, uh, the, the at last check, Brian, do you know off the top of your head? It seems like Ustream was the slowest, might be the most delayed. Yeah, I think that was the case. Yeah, and then, uh, but it, it changes, <laughs> and they use different technologies. Which is why we have all these options. Yeah. yeah. So you just find the one you like best. Okay, then. so now Justin is pretty close to right on. Yeah, I think Justin was the closest. Yeah, and Bit Gravity is probably somewhere in between. So there's a few seconds. <laughs> it's hard to show. And that then there's off. your system too. Right. I mean, there's other yeah. things as well. So. Unfortunately, you know, I think the problem is your model for what you're doing when you're watching us live is television, and this doesn't work the same way at all. A television, it, you know, it's basically the speed of light. There's there maybe is a little bit of encoding uh, differential, but not much. When you're watching video or anything over the internet, there's a lot of things in between you and the original video. There's encoding. We have to compress it. It may be done several times. There's the amount of time it takes to get to the provider. And then there's the amount of time the provider takes to get to your provider, and then the amount of time the data gets to you, and then your playback mechanism. Remember, you're playing it back on a computer, even if you're using a mobile device. And so a fast computer is going to do it better than a slow computer. So there's all these things in between. So we don't ever think of what we do live streaming as exactly live. We just figure it's within the f a minute or two. Or right. two. Yeah. Right. That's probably what he's talking about. Okay. Well, Ben, hopefully that helped. Um, but yeah, if you're watching. Uh, any of these as podcasts, let's say using the podcast app or another app where it would sync between devices, it really shouldn't be an issue. It should pick up where you left off. Here, Jeff in our chat room has one scenario it could. It wouldn't happen consistently like this. But let's say you're listening along on podcasts, da -da 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 -da, and you're walking down the street and you lost connection uh -huh. with your provider. Now, the podcast is going to keep playing because you have it locally. But the place you're at won't be synchronized oh, okay. until you have another connection. So if you if you then stop listening, you'll pick up where it last had a connection because that's the last place it knows you oh, were. Oh, that's, that's so maybe a, that's what's that's happening. A possibility. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it's happening to Ben all the time. So yeah. I don't it's know, odd. Ben. Hopefully, we helped you with a limited understanding of what <laughs> the actual issue was. It's complicated. It is complicated. What we're doing, you shouldn't be able to do. You know what else is complicated? What's that? This video that I mentioned we were going to talk about Carnegie Mellon again. So Gabe sent in this video, um, which, Brian, if you want to play it, it's on it's on that uh, that URL that I sent to you. Down the page a little bit. Now, iPad skeuomorphism. Yeah, it's weird. OK, so here's, here's what's going on. Human Interfaces Group at Carnegie Mellon, which was led by the group's director. His name is uh, Chris Harrison, who's an assistant professor of hu uh, human computer interaction have done a bunch of work that shows how traditional hand movements, you know, like yeah, using a drill tool, or cutting scissors, scissors or, or hammer yeah. or that sort of thing, that's all, you know, that's that kind of skeuomorphic way of life that, that, yeah. that, that, that computers have never really gotten much of a hold of. You know, we're used to swiping and clicking and tapping. But the researchers are like, you know what, what we as humans really want, though? We want to have gestures that more closely uh, um, mirror how we actually use tools in real life. So No, I don't want that. Why not? You don't think that that's cool? Um, well, it's cool, but it's not efficient. So, and this is a big debate. In fact, this was why Scott Forstall and others at Apple really wanted skeuomorphism. Yeah. It certainly makes it more intuitive. You look at a page, and when you turn the page, the page curl, which Steve Jobs was a big fan of, uh, goes down, and you go, oh, I get it. It's like an actual page. But you know what? It's not. It's a digital thing. And I think I this think is kind of forcing fun. digital things to act like the real world really kind of limits their ability. Right. I mean, that is that a good way to hold a magnifying glass and to, or to use a measuring tape and then that actually might work. Use Seriously? a measuring tape on the screen. That might work. But I think you have to be very cognizant of the fact that you're in a digital, different medium, a, di a digital medium, and you should use what works best in a digital medium. I, I kind of like this. I just, I don't know. It's, it's cool. Like, these are all tools that we don't we don't have. It's an interesting by the video. Way, this is, but ima oh, so, this well, is touch here's, tools, by the way, and this is, you know, it's just research. For stuff. those of you listening, though, here's an example. Um, they had a, you want to uh, 
magnify this the text on the screen yeah you pick up a virtual digital magnifying glass with your virtual digital hand and then you hold it over the screen it's sort of like it, Photoshop for everything it's too much work too much work just I want you know one here would be a better metaphor you press and hold the point you want to magnify on the screen you hold it three seconds it goes boing zips out you can move around and then when you're done you let go that has no relationship to the real world but it yeah yeah I mean pinch and zoom has no relationship to the real world either um, and it's the most efficient way of doing it I think I think you'd get used to it there are well, a few things that worked well the measuring tape I thought was kind of interesting yeah I don't know mm, I thought this that, was cool. the camera thing G dumb. Gabe I'm with you I thought that this was kind of cool thanks for sending it along because I wouldn't have well seen it's definitely this cool but I do not want to see a mouse on my iPad screen in any form no well I don't really want a mouse ever yeah, right. You know, exactly. that's that's kind of that's like computer. That's 1. why we've mo that's what we've moved ahead. We have moved ahead. Yeah, so Carnegie Mellon, why don't you get with the times? Well, I hate it's this. interesting. What a waste of research. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, again, that's called touch tools. It's just it's interesting uh, what can be applied right. to a digital screen. Right. You know, even just to say you did it. I think and it's good you to can, think about this stuff. Yeah, and then you can figure out, well, does this actually make sense, or, or, or are we making it more complicated? Here's the test. Will a three-year-old figure it out? Now, the reason those skeuomorphic things work is because we're older, right. and we've lived in the physical we, world. We need reminders of what analog. Oh, it's a folder. Yeah. I had a oh. folder. A you know but imagine, magnifies here's an example. It like a what if uh, the uh, first iPhone had had a dial that you went... Well, that would look just like the real... I would know how to use that. But is it the best way? No. No. Right. Because rotary phones are Ooh. silly. God, do you remember that? <laughs> rotary phones. Rotary phones. Yeah, right. I think right. we are a little... And I think Apple's a little stuck in that Those world. Cool now. The keyboard, for example, they make it look like a typewriter keyboard. There's, it seems like there might... That's why I like Swipe, for instance, which a number of both Windows Phone and Android have the ability, instead of tapping keys, to, to trace from key to key and right. it's a much faster easier way to spell and that's in my uh, estimation a way of thinking outside the box and saying well it doesn't have to be exactly like a typewriter right yeah It'd be a little different yeah typewriter i mean who's who who died and made typewriter king forever i mean it was fine for a while but we've got some other choices now right. don't we yeah I, I i agree with you at, at some point we're probably gonna Hopefully, see some options with native keyboards in iOS. It's important right now, to There's think. not much you can do with it's those. It's important to think about this. Try it with a three-year-old. Yep. Yeah. Can a three-year-old figure it out? And chances are they can. Uh, we love hearing from you. If you, uh, you know, <laughs> this is the he's going to show that video on how to dial a phone. Now, I was say, this has been a problem for years. Why did know? they need a video? You can dial. I guess that was not intuitive. It was new technology. Oh we my gosh. Needed a video on how to figure it out. Here oh she my is. Gosh. I worked with her, you know, at uh, Channel 4, Suzanne Shaw. That's not Suzanne uh, Shaw. You it's worked a, with her, too. I did, yeah. It was um, Suzanne she's, Saunders, and then she became Suzanne Shaw. Right. That's her. Later on. Yeah. It isn't. She's older she than dirt. She she she's been alive. She's been around for 100 difference, years. Difference. I think this that is That woman Susan has a painting in the basement Suzanne. or the attic or something. There. I love how they're explaining how phones work. Write down the number first. It wasn't so, intuitive back then. No. Well, no. well it isn't. They didn't, they didn't Stick know. your finger in a hole and spin it? I mean, look how big phones were back then. <laughs> Do you, uh, there's all these, like, uh, my mom was telling me there's there's all these, like, funny things in the olden days where phone numbers weren't seven numbers. They were, like, because you didn't need seven you didn't need. yet. You only needed was, four. Yeah, it was, like, four or five. And then, like, I, everybody on a block had like the same number and it would ring differently if it was it's meant for you. It's called a party line. Yep, and it'd be, you could listen. Yeah, that's and that right. Was, that's a little problematic, that's right. right? That's right. You know, you've got a I remember uh, when I was a little kid, I got lost in the woods. Okay. Oh, there's more. Okay. And <laughs> my sister and I wandered, wandered, and we finally found a house, a little house in the woods and we thought oh god we're saved we came in and the lady who said yeah she was watching tv yeah what do you want we're lost can we call our mommy and daddy and have them come get us yeah sure uh call, call four three two one and i said what i never had heard of a four digit phone number but apparently back in the woods in those days that's all they had they wow. couldn't afford seven numbers well what wh who did you call i called four three two one and the police answered oh okay yeah 911 is actually less then, fewer then numbers than... The 20. witch pushed us in the oven. 
<laughs> what? Um, which no, one is that? No, we pushed her in the oven. Is that Hansel and Gretel? Yeah. The kids go to the yeah. God, I don't remember that was what was happening to them. Because they've been, they were made into gingerbread kids? <laughs> Wait. If she a, wanted to bake them. Is that... Am I getting that right, or am I making that up? You know Did who the kids would know? Turn into gingerbread kids? You know who would know? What? My son is taking a college course in Grimm's Fairy Tales. Stop it. That's like taking a Tupac class at Berkeley, that's which he, apparently is also a class. That's what he thought. He said, it, no, it's actually hard. i got to write a lot of papers. <laughs> oh, like what? what is the symbolism yes, that thing? Yes, exactly. It's never as fun as you think it's going to no. be. That was like when I took all my rock and roll classes in college. And it was like music theory, and it was really hard. Uh, and I had to, had to understand what four threes uh, were and the four fours. And the, I just was like, all I want to do is listen to the Beatles. Yeah, I just this thought is we harder were than I music. thought it was going to be. I just want to pass. Uh, we love hearing from you. iPad today at twit.tv is how you can write us, send us cool articles, send us uh, uh, apps that you'd like us to cover. We try to do fairy as much tales as possible. You enjoy. Fairy tales that you'd like Leo to dramatically reenact. Mm, little golden Putting riding little, hood. Little, what? Well, Little Ooh. Red Riding Hood's taken. Ah. Trademarked. Oh. We have to be Little Golden Riding Hood. Okay. That's my Audible book. Did you know that? You can call her Little Rouge Riding Hood. Little Rouge Riding Hood. Little uh, Rojo Riding yes. Hood. You know yeah, our show so today what? is brought to you by a company that wants your old gadgets. Who would have thunk it? Thank goodness somebody wants these things. They've been gathering dust in the drawer of the closet. Yeah, the you're basement. not doing anything with them. You're not doing anything with it. You could give it, I guess, to your niece or your nephew. But wouldn't you rather have some cold, hard cash? That's why Gazelle it wants you to visit gazelle.com. They will give you cash, even for a broken iPad or a broken iPhone. Yes, it's worth some money. Your Samsung, your HTC, your BlackBerry, your, your, your Surface tablet, your Samsung tablet, your... Nexus tablet. They, these guys are so great. Just visit gazelle.com. Now, here's the deal. The quote they're going to give you today is locked in for the next 30 days. So you don't have to act on it for 30 days. So might as well get a quote on everything. Because I can tell you one thing. Nothing's getting worth more. It's all going to be worth less in 30 days. So get the value now because these things just depreciate fast. And lock it in. And then when you get the new phone or the new tablet or the new device, you, you, you have time to move your data over. Make sure you like it. And then pull the trigger. Gazelle will send you a prepaid box. You pile all the gadgets in there. You don't pay the shipping. They'll turn it around fast, wipe your data if you forget to, and send you a check or a PayPal credit or an Amazon gift card. And by the way, the Amazon gift card, they bump it up by 5%, which is awfully nice. Thinking of getting that new HTC One? I love that. Have the old HTC One? They'll buy it. Nine out of every ten Gazelle customers rates their experience excellent or better. One and a half million trade-ins. Over 700,000 customers have been paid $100 million to date. This is a great service, and I want you to try it. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Do yourself a favor. Just get the value at gazelle.com. ay 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 that's all I really know. Guadalajara. Oaxaca, Cazumel, <laughs> Cancun, Puerto uh, Vallarta, Little Mazatlan, Ranchera music because it's Cinco de Mayo. Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> it's time for our app caps. We wear funny hats so you don't have to, ladies and gentlemen. And Sarah and I have picked two fabulous. <laughs> See, I love this to me. La, 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 li, da, da, ripa. I always ask the mariachi band to play this and Guadalajara, and I give them five dollars. I know Guadalajara as a city. I didn't know it's that a city it's and a song. song. I don't know that one. Maybe city I do. City and a song. Maybe I, if I heard it, I would know it. But I, I know this one. We learned this in school. Yeah, De Calores. Yeah, it's a very, it's yeah all the wonderful. kids sing that. I feel like it's some some. The other one I like, which is not uh, Mexican, so but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> Jingle Bells. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> Can't Stop Falling in Love by uh, Elvis. No. <laughs> Guantanamera. I oh, love that's that. A good and they'll one. play that. The mariachi bands, they'll go, well, you know, that's Bolivar, but okay, we'll play it for you. And uh, I love, did you see Chad just walk by? I thought, so I thought I saw something red out of the corner of my that's eye. That's a Chad. Wild, um, a anyway, wild Chad. your app cap of the week. My app cap of the week, I think that you're actually going to be excited about it because I know how you like Cook's Quarterly. Is it quarterly? Yes. Cook's quarterly? Well, no, it's monthly. 
Cook's Monthly. Yep. It's a cooking magazine, yeah. but it's we talk about, I talk about yeah, it all the time. It's kind of high. It. It's more of a highbrow, a little bit more That's, of a wait context. Wait a minute. What? No. What? That, I'll give you an example. Bran muffins. Your mic is very. You know what they make bran muffins out of in Cork's Quarterly? Bran. They tried all of the things and they said you can't get bran. This makes my head look very strange. <laughs> 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 Am I bald? You can't get bran. This is what I would look like if I were bald. Uh, you can't get bran in most stores, so they say use Kellogg's All Bran. Now, I thought, wow, that's... But you know what? It's quite good. Well, no, I'm not saying that all of the recipes are highbrow. highbrow. It's just say... how to be best get what you're looking for. Okay. Well, I think that you know, there's there's a lot of context that's, that's part of cooks. There's some, sometimes kind of stories. They do a lot of testing. So it comes across to me as... Uh, the professional, uh, much more professional. It is. It's for somebody who a... loves to cook. It's yeah, very serious. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's kind of what I meant. But yeah. Cooks now has a new recipe uh, app called Cooks All Time Best oh, Recipes. Oh. Now. How did I miss this? Well, it's brand new. I have three or four of their cookbooks. You know, I I, I love their stuff. Besides the fact that it. See macaroni and cheese. That's not highbrow, but it's the greatest. Macaroni. Yeah. But it's the best macaroni. And cheese. What's neat though about this is like, okay, yeah. So here's the recipe: classic macaroni and cheese. Of course, I go to this because that's you know look at all basically our... all I think about. That's... But there's a story behind. How they and look, exactly. look, watch it. it, it, it at oh, first it you're gets like, colorful. Okay, it's black and white. No, oh. it's in color. Oh, look at that. It's pretty. Yeah, it's kind of a fun little effect. Mm. But there's a whole story behind what, yeah, and you've actually, because I know you know how to make mac and cheese. But, Bechamel, uh, see, I told you. You're right. But the, uh, the, the testers have the basically secrets. said, so here are a variety of things that we tried that made macaroni and cheese not ideal. That's what Cooks Oil. Illustrated does. They, tr yeah. they try a bunch of different ways of cooking a and, turkey or making a mac and, and cheese. And they tell you. And they say, this is why this one works. Here's what you don't want to do because yep. we already did it, so you don't have to. Yep. You don't want anything that's curdled and clumpy. You definitely want, don't want oily and separated. No. And, you know, it goes on and on. And then, of course, why, uh, you know, macaroni and cheese Why two up... cheeses are better than one. Exactly, because, you know, of course, you, you get more of a rich flavor and variety. But this is Best Recipes. Oh, now, I'm buying this. Yeah, How much is it? It's uh, expensive, It is I bet. 10 bucks. Oh, that's cheaper than a cookbook. And there's 80 recipes in here. Ooh, that's not very much. Well, I mean, I feel like, and here they all are, by the way. Um, I mean, th there's more than this, but these are, you know, some of the ones that are all right off the top. Best. But you got, See, you I need, have you their got cookbooks. blueberry muffins here. So they they have a all-time best recipe cookbook, which was like fifty dollars. So this is a doesn't have as many recipes. Ooh, Mike muffins with a blueberry flavor. Yeah, add jam to the batter. Hey, clever! Oh my God, that sounds so good. I'm so hungry. I made bran muffins this morning. Did you? With raisins. You actually think... made bran muffins. Yeah. We got some video here too. We Not for every single recipe, but for some of them. Combined. See, I don't use their all bran because I can find yes, bran at Whole Foods. Oh, look, look at that blueberries there. Uh -huh. I'm into it. Turn it all the way up. I love it. We don't. Oh, they're the caramelized. Oh, they're gonna melt. Oh, look at that. They're making a blueberry. Slurp. Did you know, this is a little um, trivia that I learned over the weekend, yeah. that caramelized does not refer to, like, caramelizing something. It's the man's last name who... His name was Carmel? That was his last name. Billy Carmel? Well, I don't think it was Billy. But Bobby? It was, it was something Carmel, but he was, like, the one who invented the technique. And that's why we say caramelized. Did and you, you know what? That, that... Somebody told me this at a Kentucky Derby party, so maybe they were pulling my leg. <laughs> But I think it's true. Fernando Julep invented the mint julep. Did you know that? No. Yeah, but I sure think that did. today is a great day to celebrate you, Fernando. Fernando! Do you want to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie? Yes, that I do. That's a good recipe. I've made that one. That's exactly. That's a good recipe. That's, that's what I want. And one of the things I they want talk about is of them. how it turns out you cook it at a lower temperature, not a higher temperature. Really? They, they explain the whole science. Oh, because they get it all chewy. And, yeah, you know, because you, you want it chocolate. crispy on the outside and chewy on the inside, right? Uh, yes. Yes. That's exactly I know you do. right. Yeah. Now, here are a variety of. Uh, it's hard to take me seriously, isn't it? I don't actually want to make eye contact with you <laughs> because you look so silly right now. You want to make barbecued pulled pork at home? What about a flavorful poached salmon? You know, salmon can be a little meh when you poach it. So, yeah, this is actually something that's. I would like it to be in my wheelhouse. Eggplant parmesan that's lighter and quicker. You, you live in the wheelhouse or you cook there? I, I live in a wheel. Mm. It's my house. <laughs> And that's where I cook uh, chicken enchiladas and so on. Now, we, you know, we, earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, bad reviews in the app store. I did notice, and this is a brand new app, so there are only a few reviews. Yeah. 
there were some people saying, you know what, this kind of sucks though because it's never going to update. It's basically just Cook saying, here's our all-star recipes and that sort of it. But I feel like, okay, I mean, how many recipes are you really going through on a weekly basis? For me, it's like, I don't know, three or four. Yeah. Give me 80 recipes of stuff that's tried and true, and it's absolutely going to be a hit. Yeah. And that's 10 bucks. Yeah. That's worth 10 bucks to me. 10 bucks is not bad. I mean, like I said, I have the cookbook that they have of all of their best recipes. Yeah. And it's much more expensive. On the other hand, I have them all. Right. And so I cook sometimes with the iPad, and I cook sometimes with the cookbook, and I find it a little bit easier, especially if you have a cookbook stand, to use a cookbook. I, the iPad... You know, you know what's bad? It goes dark. You're halfway through the recipe, you know, and you some, have to unlock it. Some cookbook apps, though, stay, stay on. They have a toggle where they it'll say, "Never actually go to sleep." Yeah, I need that. When the app is open, yeah. um, uh, how to cook everything is one of those. Mark Bittman, love yes, him. Yes, Mark Bittman. Anyway, this is it's a you know it's it's it like like the name says, cooks all time best recipes. If you want that, it's ten dollars in the App Store. And of course, we'll have the uh, the link in our show notes as well. This hat seems to have cost me about thirty IQ points. Do you feel stupid? <laughs> I look like a giant baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you really do. <laughs> you have such a such a narrow shoulder width, Leo. Mm -hmm. You're very delicate. You are. Yeah, you're just a delicate little dude. So my app, <laughs> remember Hitman, the game Hitman, where you play a Hitman? Yeah. Yeah, this is called no. Hitman Go because it's the mobile version. Just Hitman Go, oh, okay. Four dollars right. ninety nine cents. Now this is not what you think. This is not a shoot 'em up game. This is not, you know, uh, you know, like uh, Call of Duty or anything like that, or, or Thief, the game where you snuck around. Hitman Go is a puzzle game of all things. But it's really kind of interesting, kind of fun. I, I was asking before the show uh, for some tips, some recommendations, and I think Marmot in our chat room said, hey, I love Hitman Go. And so I've been playing it, and it's kind of fun. Was this a board game originally? It must have been. Uh, now, there are in-app purchases. Uh, in fact, let me go back here. You'll see that there are different Hitman Go packs. There's Hitman Go. If you get a certain point, you get more packs, and then they're going to have more down the road. This is what you get for free. So we're going to play. Now, I played the first few levels. So it starts as a tutorial, but let's go to level six. It starts to get a little bit harder here. The idea is you're a hitman, and you've got to sneak around and either get to the exit or get to your target. And in this case, I'm trying to get to this exit here. But there's a problem. There are these people around, and if they spy you, that is, if you get to a square right next to them and they're looking at you, they will clobber you. So you, you can't just walk up, and I'll show you what it would look like if I just walked up to somebody, and you'll see what the problem is. I'm gonna walk walk right, oh, I guess I have to throw something. What? What? And I'll walk right in front of him, and it'll go boom, and he knocks me over. So it's kind of like a board game, right? So what I'm gonna do, then we're in a, a, a level where I can distract them by throwing stones. So let's distract this guy. Um, it's a puzzle game, and it's kind of challenging. Now I throw a stone, now only he noticed it. Now watch what happens. When he, I'm gonna throw another stone. When he, see they notice it and they go towards it. So I'm I'm getting around the watchers. You see what I'm doing? Now I could knock him out, but I don't need to. Oh, I have a problem here. Oh, rats, he got me. So the idea is we've gotta get, it's a little, it's a puzzle. We gotta get around. What if I throw it there? Those guys are gonna go that way. Okay, so that's good. It's almost like chess in a way. Yeah, you have to think ahead, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit challenging, I have to admit. Now I'm gonna try this. Okay, that's gonna affect him. Now, I'll oh, see, I, I'm not gonna be able to get by this guy. Oh, psh. So this is really challenging. Hitman Go, it's a puzzle game, a turn based puzzle game. It's kind of odd looking, um, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I can tell you it's challenging. I'm, I'm kind of stuck right here on, uh, on this one. This is a tough level. Um, but I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna continue to work at it. $4.99. And um, uh, thank you, Marmot, for uh, your tip. That's a good one. I was like, I think maybe if I go here, and of course, as you get to more levels, there'll be more possibilities here. But if I go here, I want you to get past it. I gotta get this guy. Yeah, this is challenging. Because I want to get 
he he can see me, but then he can see me. I need to get here. I get. I mean, I could throw it there. Now that's going to move him down. Oh, but now that's not going to work because now this guy's going to come up and he'll see me when I get there. So I've I've blown it. And you, it's kind of like you know, cut the rope or any of these games where you can reset at Angry Birds, where yeah. you reset it after you try something and you realize that that didn't work. <sighs> if I throw it there, that's not going to work. Now, it now, oh, maybe, no. Oh, now I can knock them both off. Ha ha! Maybe I did find something. But I've got to distract this guy. Let's go back down here and throw that there. Now, no, see, I'm going to have the same problem. Because watch, that guy's going to come up, and now he's going to get me if I go over here. Anyway, get the idea? Sort of. Does it puzzle you? Yes, it puzzles me very much, but that's kind of the fun of it. What's nice about it is that you can keep trying. Yes. So it's not like, there's not like that like time thing that, you know, is, ah, uh, Hitman Go. Go all in uppercase. Hit go! Go! It's from squareenix.com. Uh, well, Leo, we've come to the end of a fine, fabulous show. I felt very festive. It is Cinco de Mayo here uh, as we record this live on Monday. We usually start the show oh, somewhere a little after noon Pacific time, 3 There's p.m. Eastern. Jose the cat. Jose? Jose. El gato. El gato Jose. El gatito. Oh, there's Jose. <laughs> I didn't. I was like, okay. Where? Jose you don't the know cat. because know. he snuck there up on you. There he is with his salsa. Jose. Jose. Little you gatito. See a gatito. He looks like he's having a good time. He's got, uh, you know, it's not going to end well for all Jose Cuervo. You think Jose Cuervo was a real person? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, on that note... The same guy, he invented Carmel, I believe. That's different. That's a different. That's Jose Carmel. <laughs> Not the same thing as Jose Cuervo. Two different men. Did you uh, know that Cuervo was named after Jose Cuervo? I don't... I don't know. Which came first? The, the chicken man or the worm? Or the tequila? Mm. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of iPad Today. We will be back next week. Uh, yeah, we've got some weeks before Memorial uh, Day that we're taking off. So. She is really counting on Memorial Day <laughs> to save her. But you got another three weeks, kid. I just, that people get so mad when we take the day off, and I just want to make sure that we tell you ahead of time that Memorial Day, we will not be doing an episode of iPad Today, but don't worry about that. you got a few more episodes left. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you next week on iPad Today. Ow. Ow.